All right, so how do you solder a lead-free ball valve? I said lead-free because most valves that are sold today aren't brass anymore. They're either silicon, bismuth, or mixed copper alloys and are lead-free. And some contractors or do-it-yourselfers aren't aware that this change was made and need to be made aware of it, as well as the different method to approach them. So the real question is, why is there lead in these valves? The reason lead was used were quite simple. Lead was mixed with other metals to make them easier to work with, making them easier to shape and mold. Lead also has a natural tendency to fill in the gaps of more porous metals, which would make them tougher and less likely to leak when under pressure. Before the 2014 law on drinking water, valves had a maximum lead allowance of 8%. However, the US regulations changed for potable water systems and only have a minimum lead allowance of 0.25% now on wetted surfaces, which makes for a big change. Some ways to differentiate leaded from lead-free valves are that some companies use an LF stamp on the valve body as seen here. Some change the color of the handle tags to lighter colors like white or blue instead of black or yellow for example. And lastly, the color of the alloy itself is less yellow and has more of a nickel or silverish tint to it. In the years, plumbers have adapted a certain technique to solder these leaded valves. But with these changes in materials, a change in technique is required to make for a leak-free joint. Let me explain myself. There's one major thing that differs from leaded valves to lead-free valves when soldering. And that's the fact that lead-free valves have a much lower thermal conductivity compared to leaded valves. But how does this affect the soldering part? On leaded valves, heating of the valve only would get both the socket and pipe up to the correct temperature. However, since these new lead-free valves don't conduct heat nearly as good as leaded valves do, more attention needs to be put into heating the pipe to get it up to temperature. This does two things. It makes sure that the pipe is hot enough, and two, it expands the pipe and closes the gap, or capillary space, which increases thermal conductivity, as air on its own acts as an insulator. Then, when the pipe is judged hot enough, heating of the valve hub or socket could begin. It's important to heat all around to make sure that there are no cold spots, and then the solder could be applied. But what about solder and flux? Doesn't that need to be changed as well? The answer is yes. Many manufacturers recommend using a low melting solder such as Stirling solder because it melts at 410 degrees Fahrenheit instead of most solders which melt at the 450 to 460 mark. This opens up the time frame of which you could solder which lessens the possibility of boiling off the flux which burns at around 600 degrees Fahrenheit. As for flux, they also recommend using tinning flux as there's less chances of improper coverage because there's solder powder in it and also because it tends to burn off less easily than normal flux does. If you want the same stuff I used, I'll have links to all these products in the description box below. So here we go. Just as you'd normally would, clean the pipe and fitting real good using either some sand cloth or an abrasive pad like this. Then you want to deburr the inside of the pipe using one of these or a pencil reamer like this little guy right here. After, you could apply your flux, making sure to cover the pipe properly and start heating the pipe. Now, some of you are probably wondering if you should solder it in the opened, half-opened or closed position, right? Well, each manufacturer has a recommendation for this and for Nibco, they recommend closing it. But do make sure to inform yourself before soldering. So as we saw in the animation before, you want to heat the pipe thoroughly before moving on to the actual valve by circling around it for a few seconds until it's hot enough, and then move to the hub. Now, whenever soldering a valve, you always want to point the flame away from the body as to not overheat the internals. These nylon seats are super easy to melt and are what creates a good seal. Some companies actually recommend wrapping a damp rag around the body of the valve to help absorb some of the heat. 
but if you point the flame away like this, you should be fine. So go ahead and test your solder by probing it every now and then. And when it starts to penetrate into the fitting, it means it's pretty much reached the correct temperature and you could remove the heat. I like using approximately the same amount of solder as the diameter of the pipe I'm soldering. So if I'm soldering 1 inch, I'll use 1 inch of solder and so on. When you're done, wipe the soldered area down with a nice clean rag to remove any flux and check to see if the packing needs to be retightened, just to make sure. And you're done. Now, some people might be skeptical on whether this method gives you proper coverage or not. So I soldered three ball valves the same way and I cut and opened up the soldered portion so we could see how well it went. Personally, I've had some leaks not using this method with lead free valves. And ever since I started applying the new method, I haven't had a leak. And we could see that the proof is in the pudding. We almost got 100% coverage on all 6 joints, which means it's good. I hope you guys learned something from this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe for more good videos like this one. And until the next one, thanks for watching.